what goes around comes around. China gave the world debt and economic bloodshed. Now it's suffering the same. China's banks are sinking. They are the backbone of the Chinese economy and they're crumbling under their own weight. China's problems are older than the Wuhan virus, but the virus has made them much worse. China would have you believe that they've put the pandemic behind them, that the dragon is spitting fire again, but the truth is the, the dragon is coughing. There is a deep systemic infection that is ailing the Chinese economy and it stems from the banks. The banks are failing and here's proof. Chinese citizens cannot withdraw large sums of money anymore. There's a new rule. This rule is limited to one province right now, the province of Hebei. This is basically a pilot program starting this month. People living in Hebei will have to give a, a one-day notice. This is for withdrawals of more than 100,000 yuan. That's a little more than $14,000. Now, corporations will also face limits on withdrawal. They cannot conduct transactions of more than 500,000 yuan that is around $71,000. Now, anyone transacting at a bank will have to provide information in advance. For depositors, they have to share the source of their funds. For withdrawals, the account holder must share why he or she needs to take out this huge sum of money. Now, reports say this program will be expanded to provinces like Zhejiang and Shenzhen later this year. Officials say these measures will help in quote-unquote curbing unreasonable demand for large amounts of cash. Why does China need a rule like this? Why should people seek the government's permission to access their own cash? Because banks are running dry and people are afraid. Last month, two lenders were in trouble in Hebei and Shangxi. There was a bank run. Customers were rushing to withdraw their money. They thought the lenders might fail. Ultimately, Chinese authorities had to step in. Now, so far, China has hidden this problem from the world. But the fact is, Chinese banks are in a very bad shape. The cracks began to show last year. According to a report, 586 banks, 586 banks and financing firms were classified as highly risky by the authorities. That's more than 13% of China's banking sector. Out of this, about 10% were classified as high risk. In 2019, three banks in China failed in a span of three months. In May, Chinese regulators took over the Baoshang Bank in Inner Mongolia. In July, the bank of Jinzhou failed. It was rescued by the state-owned Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. And in August, China's sovereign wealth fund had to save the Hengfeng Bank in the Shandong province. Three banks. They fell like pieces of dominoes. If this was any other country, it would have triggered fears of a financial meltdown. But stories like these are buried in China. So the question is, why are China's banks failing? The answer is bad debt. China has been fueling its growth with debt. China's total debt has quadrupled in 10 years, multiplied by four times. And years of borrowing has made the banks hollow. As of March, China's total domestic debt was more than 300% of the country's GDP, 317% to be precise. That's what, that is what is on the books. And reports say that there are many loans which are off the books. These hidden debt bombs are the bigger worry. You see, China's banking system is controlled by four big state banks. They control the financial system and they control 50% of all loans. So effectively, the government controls the financial system in China, like all systems. This has given rise to an enormous shadow banking industry, riddled with corruption and expensive loans. China's shadow banks are worth more than $5 trillion. That's more than 50% of the country's GDP. So China has been trying to quietly clean all of this up. In 2019, Chinese corporate borrowers defaulted on nearly $20 billion in loans. The scale of the debt is so large that China has allowed some players to publicly fail just to send out a message. Tighter controls have been placed to counter social unrest. In 2019, a 29-year-old woman was charged with spreading rumors. 
She reportedly claimed that the Yichuan Rural Commercial Bank was going into bankruptcy. Now, this is a small bank in Henan. And the bank was quick to deny any claims of bankruptcy. So this woman was arrested. But weeks later, authorities launched an investigation against the bank's former chairman. Something was wrong there. The bank is still in business, according to an old report. We've not been able to confirm ourselves. Perhaps it was thrown a lifeline. Not everyone gets a lifeline, though. Wu Xiaohui was the founder of one of China's biggest insurance companies. He was charged with fraud after a default. He was sent to jail for 18 years. He was found guilty of cheating his investors of more than $10 billion. China tried to make an example out of this man. The message is clear. Defaulters will be punished. At least some of them will be. But the rot runs very deep. China's banking system is a ticking time bomb. If it were to explode, it will take the Chinese economy along with it.